Hello everyone and welcome back. On today's episode, we're going to make this little buy now, buy plan button work. So, let's get started. What we need to do is actually go to our Stripe dashboard. Um, and here, we're going to be creating a product. And so the product, here in our product catalog, is going to be what the user purchases. So, in this example, I actually have three distinct products. We have a freelancer plan, startup plan, and enterprise plan. Uh, but we're going to actually just start with the single, uh, let's say, startup plan. So click add product. We're going to just call this startup. You can add a description if you want. It's entirely optional. Uh, for amount, I'm going to do 32. Reoccurring, and the billing period is monthly. We will later on in the course add a yearly, but for now, we're just going to stick with something simple. What's important is you click this more pricing options um, because we're actually going to move down to this lookup key section. If you read here, lookup keys make it easier to manage and make future pricing changes by using a unique key, e.g. standard monthly for each price, enabling easy querying and retrieval of specific prices. So this lookup key is just how we're going to be querying this particular product, our startups monthly tier. Um, so what I'm going to call this is Tier Startup Monthly. And you'll see why this is important soon. Uh, so we're going to click Next and then Add Product. Great. So here we have our startup, our product, and now we can work with this in our code. So let's go back to our, our editor and we're going to actually create a new endpoint. So in our server, API directory, let's create another directory called Stripe. And this is where we're going to host, or this is going to be the home of all of our Stripe specific uh, server endpoints. And here we're going to create one called create checkout session.ts. And we're going to start with a couple imports. Let's import Stripe from server slash utils slash Stripe. Let's import something called get server session from next off. Oh, sorry, actually, you want this to be hashtag off. And then Prisma client from Prisma client. Now that we're here, we're gonna do a const Prisma equals new Prisma client so that we can later on query our Prisma data or our database using Prisma's ORM. And now we can do export, export default event handler. If you're familiar with uh, Nitro, which is Nuxt's like server implementation or the, the framework that Nuxt relies on for its, its backend, um, this should look similar. We're just defining an endpoint at this particular URL. Next, we're going to use something called, we're going to get our lookup key, uh, we'll do camel case for this, equals await read body of event. So this is just a utility function provided by Nitro um, that's going to snag the body in our HTTP request. And you'll see where this is coming from later on when we're actually calling this endpoint. Then we're going to create an auth session equals await get server session of event. And so this is just to verify that we are in fact logged in. So I'm going to say get if auth, ses auth session and auth session dot user dot email, then we can do some querying. The reason I do this particular check is because the email is required in this next query that we're going to do. Then we can do a const account equals await prisma dot account dot find first. And here we're going to do where the user's email is equal to auth session dot user dot email. So we're doing a little a query for our, our, um, our account. And now we can check if account because this can return as null. So we have to first just check it exists. 
And then we're going to make sure it has a Stripe customer ID. And then last but not least, we're going to actually make sure that the user is not subscribed because we don't want to run this if the user is already subscribed. Our, our goal here is to make the user subscribed. Um, okay. We're going to do something called const prices equals await stripe.prices.list. And here is where we use our lookup key. So there's lookup keys argument that it expects. And it does expect an array, but here we're just actually going to pass it our lookup key. Extract it earlier. And then there's this expand. Specifies which fields in the response should be expanded. Um, so the response is going to be, you know, a JavaScript object. Um, and it has like nested values. And so here we just want to make sure that the data product is expanded. It doesn't just return the ID, but actually all of its values. And so what we just did here is this actually is querying and getting our startup problem. Now, the last thing we need to do is create something called a session. And session is again from Stripe. So we're gonna do stripe.checkout.sessions. Dot create. We're going to pass it our customer, which is our account .stripe customer ID. We're going to add something called build billing address collection. So specify whether checkout should collect the customer's billing address. Um, this defaults to auto, but I add it just for ex to be explicit while reading through this code. Now there's something called line items, a list of items the customer is purchasing. This is actually just one thing. And the price is prices.data sub zero dot id. So remember that's coming from here. Quantity is one. So you're only buying one subscription. Mode is subscription. And then we need to add something called success URL. And here I'm just going to do our local host 3000. And we'll create a page called success. And then we also want to cancel URL. Same thing, localhost 3000 slash cancel. What, what we can get out of this is something called a session.url. So if the session.url exists, then we return it. We're going to just say return URL session.url. And you'll see why we're going to use the URL. Basically, what this is generating is a external page that we're going to navigate to where we can handle the whole checkout process on Stripe's end. So we're not actually doing the checkout and the data input on the credit card input and whatnot through our server and our website. We're actually going to offload that to Stripe and have them handle it. Cool. Now that we have this endpoint, let's use it. So we're going to go to our pricing section component, and I'm actually going to create a new function called checkout. So this is an async function. We're going to create our price lookup key constant variable, and this is just going to be the lookup key of this value. Uh, let's see, what exactly did I use? So in my case, it's here, startup monthly, and then we're going to use this. So we're going to do a const response equals await fetch, and we're going to call this endpoint that we just created. Create checkout session. Method is post, and then we're going to be passing it a body. And in this body is our lookup key. Price lookup key. So remember when I was saying in our body here, we have lookup key. Oh, so I actually want to make sure this key aligns with the body that I'm passing it. So here we're going to use camel case. Now we're going to just check if response, basically if it's valid, if it was a valid response, um, we're going to navigate to the responses URL. And then we add an additional parameter here, which is external is true. We're just telling it that this is going to be navigating off of our site. Okay. Now that we have this checkout function, I actually want to use it right here. So we're going to make a wait checkout. And to do that, we also need to make this async. So now if the user is logged in and they click the handle by now button, it should actually navigate them to checkout. Or it should call this function and it will navigate to checkout. The last thing I want to do here, though, is remember in this response, we have a success URL and a cancel URL. 
So these are mandatory parameters to this checkout sessions. Um, and it's basically what we show after the checkout was successful or if the user canceled. Um, so I'm not actually gonna do anything too crazy here, but I did just wanna show it to you. So we're gonna create first a success. And here I'll just do view base and I'll just say success. And that's all. Now I'm gonna do the same, create a canceled view page and say canceled. And that's all. So I'm just creating, so these, these particular paths are valid. Um, I imagine in an actual production grade application, you're gonna want you know, much more information to come as you're showing these. All right, so this should all be set up now. All right, so let's go back to our web page. Just make sure you're logged in. Now, let's click Buy Now. And you see here, it actually takes us to checkout.stripe.com and it generates this URL for us. And here, I'm gonna just, um, it's, a, it's, it's all dummy data, it's all test. Uh, but what you want to actually use is 4242424242. And then here, just any valid date, this any valid number, this any name, as well as country. I'm just currently in Indonesia, that's why it's showing that. So, you see here it says Visa. Um, if you check my the blog article, you'll you'll see there's there's multiple card like valid cards you can use to test different operations, different error messages, different card types. Uh, this is just Visa, it's easy to remember, so I always use that. Now, let's click Submit. Now, when this is finished, it should redirect this to success. So, I want to show you a couple of things. So we've successfully paid and subscribed, and if we go to our transactions on our Stripe dashboard, you'll see, we'll look at that. Payment completed, we now have $32 coming our way. Obviously, it's dummy data, I wish it was real. Um, so that's great. Uh, but one thing I do want to show you is let's navigate to our Prisma Studio. You should expect to see is subscribed is true, right? But in fact, it's not. It's actually false. And that is what we're going to look into in the next video. But we're nearly there. We're accepting payments on the Stripe side, but it's not quite here and, show, and reflected in our database. So we have one more chapter before it's like fully in sync. Anyways, that's all we have for today. Hope you enjoyed. See you in the next one.